Hi and welcome to a, another segment of Shop Talk. Today's Shop Talk video is going to be on about homebrew your own test gear. And you know test gear can be uh, very expensive when you go out and you try to buy it. So a lot of times one of my enjoy it other than working on radios is building my own equipment to use. Now I recently I uh, saw a video by Alan W2AEW where he did a uh, test review of a ESR meter and he had linked the ESR meter to a guy named Jay Diddy on the EEV blog forum and it's a meter that he had designed and Alan had reproduced it and did some tests on it and it looks very promising there's two items here on the bench that you see one of them is a old Simpson 260 meter and the other is a set of uh, computer speakers now I've gotten lots and lots of uh, questions on this set of computer speakers on uh, what it was and what it was for and uh, what it is made a single tracer out of it but first uh, we'll go back and we'll look at this uh, old Simpson 260 meter and this is an old one I think it was made somewhere in the <laughs> early 60s or so I'm not sure what the date is on it but it is a very old meter and uh, a friend of mine at work gave that meter to me and asked me if I wanted it and I said sure and uh, I brought it home and tore it apart and started looking at it and found out it just wasn't uh, worth repairing. This is the inside assembly out of it. And you can see everything was corroded up. The batteries that corroded up in it. Um, it's in real bad shape. And there's a lot of uh, resistors and some of these wear around resistors has the little uh, wear, you know, with the cloth covered wire on it that's in here and all of them are just corroded up so you know I couldn't see uh, no way to get this meter back up and working without completely rebuilding it and it just isn't worth it on this part so I decided to just strip it down and uh, use the case and the meter function for something else and one of them was the uh, five transistor ESR tester that Jay Diddy on EEV blog form had uh, posted up. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on how it's designed, how it works or anything. Uh, I'll link Alan's video below and also a link to the EEV blog form where this is posted at and you can go have a look at it yourself. But uh, it was basically, you know, old, they did a uh, SMD version of it and then he did a through hole version of it and you know that's very old school and that's how I like to do things so that's how I did my version of it and he even give all the files and stuff to print out so you could uh, make your own circuit trace so basically all I had to do was get some glossy paper and uh, just print out the uh, circuit trace onto this piece of glossy paper don't use regular printer paper when you do this because the toner bonds to the paper and you know it makes transfer a, a little tough but uh this is an old magazine it's got some glossy paper in it and you have to use a laser printer not an inkjet but a laser printer and uh, you can print it right out onto the uh, glossy paper next thing you would do is after you print it out is cut it out and lay this on your circuit board and uh, tape it down and you can take a clothes iron and heat it and that'll transfer the toner onto the copper then run it under some water and uh, you can peel the paper off and it'll leave the toner on the copper and just throw it in the etch it bath and let it uh, you know do its thing so real easy to do you know it's not hard at all and if you have any little problems after you transfer it you can always take a resist pin and go in and 
fill up the gaps or whatever that's needed. So when I made mine, I went ahead and uh, printed off two boards, and this one wasn't quite as good as the other one. Um, you know, the lines are not as crisp and clear as the other one come out, but I used two different types of paper. One of them was the magazine cover, and the other one was a magazine page. This one was done by a magazine page. And if we get a, into it, you can see a few spots on it. But the one with the magazine cover come out pretty good. So, you know, I just threw this thing together yesterday. Um, made the board, etched it out, and put all the components on it. And, uh, you know, I looked around in the shop and decided that the old Simpson 260 um, would be a good candidate to house this ESR meter project. Now, in Alan's video, he didn't have a... Uh, a meter available so he used the uh, his Simpson 260 to uh, demonstrate the circuit with and all I did was you know removed all the guts out of it um, the zero ohm part is now a BNC um, connector and I used the uh, a set of tweezers little BNC these were provided for Mike at Mike's radio repair that he had sent me so that was a good candidate to use these on. And uh, the range select switch is actually now the variable resistor to zero out the meter width. And also um, the connector is also incorporated into the common and plus um, leads. And I have the original lead connectors. Um, the leads are in bad shape and was breaking apart so I cut them off and I'm going to make a set of leads so I can plug them into it. This way it kind of, you know, leaves the meter almost stock looking, but, uh, you know, it gives a new life to something that would have been discarded or thrown out or whatever. But uh, I do have the meter together, have the, the circuit together. I'm having a problem with it when you turn it on. You see the meter does not go to uh, zero. Uh, so I got to do some troubleshooting on that, and uh, we have a page on the EEV blog for that, so I got to check this out. I have got it so I can uh, zero out the meter, but when I release it, it doesn't go back down to zero, so it's not reading the meter accurately as it should, but uh, I can put a capacitor on it and test it and in the meter that does register and do this big cap so yeah got a bit more troubleshooting to do on this and I think I can get that out pretty good well open it up I'll let you see the inside of it also, the uh, AC-DC select switch is now the power switch to cut it off and on, just so you know that. Okay, so I have the screws out of the back of it. And as you can see, there's my little uh, circuit board. I did not have a small voltage regulator, it's a 5 regulator, so I used a uh, one off the SMD board and put on it and I'm playing around with some resistor values here trying to get the meter calibrated but I just mounted it you know the 9 volt battery in the battery clip and wired it in you know very simple very old school and uh, it really didn't take that long to build I made a couple of copper standoffs to hold the board onto the back of the meter keep it in so yeah very simple like I said I just got some more troubleshooting to do to it and we should have this up and going and that'll be fun to play around with and you know it gives life to an old piece of equipment that will no longer be used 
So this piece is um, an item that I've had, I don't know, over a dozen emails about where people had seen it sitting on the bench. And I used to keep it sitting up on top of the uh, solar station. But all this is is uh, a set of computer speakers that uh, you use on your computer. And it's two speakers, a left and a right. And they're just taped together with some uh, filament tape. I mean, not special, and some... Uh, feet glued onto the bottom of it and as you can see you know this one's wired it's got its own AC power supply and this is the original plug you know to plug into your computer so that can still be used and it still operates just like a set of uh, computer speakers the only thing is that you notice different is is that it has a BNC jack on it and what you can do with this if you're working on a radio and audio source and you need to test and see if there's audio passing through this is all you need to do and I'll show you how I went about you know putting this together it's very simple so here's the inside showing the main circuit board so all you need to do is find your wire that you would plug into your speaker um, into the back of the computer this will be your input this will be three wires a left a right and a ground and all you need to do is follow them, get a place to solder to, and you can use either side. Um, do not connect both sides to one input, because you can short out the uh, one of the amplifiers. This board is a dual amplifier board, so like I say, it has the input for left and right. So, you know, just figured out, I used a piece of uh, 174 coax, and it's connected to one side of the input and it comes over to a BNC jack and what you want to do is put a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series with your center pin on your BNC jack and what this does is block any DC current from going in and destroying your amplifiers you don't want DC current to go in so you only want to pass AC singles and that's what your capacitor would do so you know very simple now you know I could go in and add a second BNC connector probably into the other speaker and drop a wire through and uh, you know connect to the other side then I'll have a uh, dual input for you know checking two audio sources at one time maybe the input and the output up and amplifier and comparing the difference in the uh, the level you know by sound just by using your ear you know very simple there's no uh, all you need is uh, two wires you don't have to use coax I like using the coax myself a chassis mount BNC connector and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and um, this one is at 600 volts so uh, I wouldn't suggest putting 600 volts into it, but you know you just don't want, you don't want that DC to get in there and destroy your amplifier. So you know the next thing you need after you get the BNC connector installed is a probe, and um, I'm just using my old ICO uh, scope demodulator probe. It works very well for picking off audio signals. But, you know, chances are you're not going to have one. Well, that is not a problem. This was an ink pen. As you can see. The BNC connector. Piece of RG174 coax. And a ground clip. And that was, you know, very simple to, uh, to use. And all the tip is is one of those old cheap uh, Radio Shack analog multimeter um, I just cut the end off and used the tip in this old ink pen and built my little circuit board inside so this is basically what our um, scope Pro consists of and uh, as you can see this is what our alligator clip is we go through a th thousand um, Capacitor, 1 in 48 diode, 220 k ohm resistor, and there's another capacitor and resistor in series. 
and to find this you'll just Google ICO scope demodulator probe you'll find this manual on the uh, Bama website and it lists several different probes that you can build and this computer is doing a whole lot more right now than it really wants to this is one of my older laptops that I'm having to use out here until I can uh, get another computer up and going and it, it's just slow like I say just you know you know Google ICO scope demodulator probe and you can find it a very simple little circuit to build and uh, there's you know several easy ways of going about building this I'll just give you a few little hints um, find whatever you're going to uh, use to put your probe in um, it can be an ink pen like this a sharpie a magic marker body or whatever you decide to do and uh, measure the inside diameter and cut you a strip of double sided circuit board if you have it not single side will work good um, double side works good because you can put your components on one side and you can lay your ground plane on the other side um, but all you do is cut that strip out and you can see from my crude drawing so once you cut the strip out you can go back and score it and this way you got isolated pads and you can put your you know solder your tip on um, drop your capacitor across and drop your diode across and then your resistor across and then uh, you can score the back side and use that for a ground if you're using um, single sided board I like using double sided board that way you can connect your resistor and run it around to the back side um, put some insulating material on the leads but it makes it you know quick and easy to make a probe once you get all this done just slide this into the uh, the housing and there you go So you know, one good thing about the single tracer is uh, probe around like right this minute we hear this radio has very very low receive. Um, it's got a good estimate of where the audio is down low. So you know we're not sure what's going on, but you know you can take your single tracer and, and start probing through the audio. And just by doing that, what that tells me is there's a uh, problem with the volume switch that we'll have to look at. So, you know, it's always good when you can build your own equipment like this. You can uh, learn a lot from building it, and then you get to use it, and it's not costing you a whole lot. So, yeah, so when you build that, you know, there's a lot of different probes you can make for it. And uh, use it you know and, and be able to find your problems in your radios and stuff um, like I say it's very simple you saw what it was to it wasn't a whole lot to it at all anyway I hope you found this video to be useful um, I know I haven't been getting a lot of videos out but it's just been so much going on here it's uh, almost impossible to get the time at the moment to do videos but we're slowly getting back into it and we'll get some more on you know I had a lot of footage on the 101 uh, you remember the computer went bad sent the hard drive out um, he found several sectors on it that was bad um, so some of those sectors contain most of my video stuff that I have shot so it's you know a complete restart back over on what I've done on the receiver and I also had did a video on the uh, single tracer um, the week before the storm but that video is gone but anyway I do have the hard drive um, I can use it as a slave I'm able to get most of my contact information a lot of my schematics that I only had on that hard drive um, a lot of the stuff I did put on my one terabyte drive but last month or so before the storm I just didn't have time to switch things over but you know it's always good to prepare yourself for the worst because <laughs> you never know when something's going to come up anyway I'll leave some links down below um, for the uh, ESR meter um, to Alan's 
video and to EEV blog just click the little show more tab and as always you know if you like the video we like to hear what you have to say and uh, plenty more to come you know just taking some time so we'll see you next time